What's up everybody? It's your name, back with another video. This time we're diving deep into the world of DDoS attacks, a world that's more relevant than ever. We're talking about the legal lines you absolutely cannot cross, the ethical dilemmas that come with this territory, and of course, the technical nuts and bolts of how these attacks actually work. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. We've got a lot to unpack, so let's jump right in. Before we even think about the how of DDoS attacks, we need to talk about the should we even. Launching a DDoS attack has serious legal consequences, even if you think you're justified. We're talking fines, jail time, the whole nine yards. And ethically, it's a gray area to say the least. Think of it like this. You're essentially digitally silencing someone, preventing them from using a service. Not cool, right? But here's the thing. Understanding the technical aspects of DDoS, even if you'd never launch one yourself, is crucial in today's world. It's like knowing how a lock works, even if you're not a lock picker. It helps you protect yourself. So, we're going to break down the legal ramifications, the ethical debates, and everything in between. You'll come away from this section knowing not just what's against the law, but also what's right and wrong in the digital world. Because at the end of the day, knowledge is power. And in the cybersecurity landscape, a little knowledge can go a long way in protecting yourself and others. Stay tuned, because in the next section, we're diving into the technical stuff, what a DDoS attack actually is and how it can bring down websites and services. All right, let's break down what a DDoS attack actually is. Imagine a website or an online service like a store. A DDoS attack is like flooding that store with so many people that legitimate customers can't even get in. The store is still there, but it's inaccessible. Technically speaking, it's all about overwhelming a server with more traffic than it can handle. Think of it like sending thousands of emails every second to a single inbox. It's going to crash, right? These attacks exploit vulnerabilities in how servers handle connections. By bombarding a server with requests from multiple sources, often hijacked devices, Attackers can cripple websites, online services, even entire networks. The scary part is, DDoS attacks are becoming increasingly sophisticated. We're not just talking about simple floods of traffic anymore. Attackers are using botnets, massive networks of infected devices, to amplify their attacks. These botnets can generate insane amounts of traffic, making DDoS attacks even more difficult to mitigate. But understanding how these attacks work is the first step in defending against them. In the next section, We'll take a look at some of the latest DDoS techniques attackers are using in 2025. Trust me, it's some next-level stuff. DDoS attacks are constantly evolving, and in 2025, they're more sophisticated than ever. Attackers are always finding new ways to exploit vulnerabilities and amplify their attacks. One of the scariest trends is the rise of AI-powered DDoS attacks. We're talking about attacks that can learn and adapt in real time, making them incredibly difficult to defend against. Another trend is the use of IoT devices in botnets. Your smart fridge, your security camera, they can all be hijacked and used to launch massive attacks. And then there's the rise of multi-vector DDoS attacks. These attacks use a combination of techniques to overwhelm targets from multiple angles, making them even harder to mitigate. But don't worry, we'll break down all of these techniques in detail. You'll learn how they work, what makes them so dangerous, and most importantly, how to protect yourself. Because in the world of cybersecurity, knowledge is your best defense. So buckle up because we're about to get technical. Now let's get our hands dirty and dive into the world of DDoS tools, specifically within the Kali Linux environment. Kali Linux, for those unfamiliar, is like the Swiss Army knife of cybersecurity. It's got tools for everything, including, you guessed it, launching DDoS attacks. We're not condoning illegal activities here, but understanding how these tools work is crucial for ethical hacking and fortifying your own defenses. One of the most well-known tools is Loic Low Orbit Ion Cannon. It's been around for a while, but it's still a popular choice for its simplicity and effectiveness. Then there's Hoic High Orbit Ion Cannon, which is basically Loic on steroids. It can generate even more traffic, making it a serious threat in the wrong hands. We'll also explore tools like Slowloris, which takes a more subtle approach, slowly draining a server's resources instead of overwhelming it with traffic. By the end of this section, you'll have a solid understanding of how these tools work and the damage they can inflict. Remember, knowledge is power, and in cybersecurity, it's your best weapon. 
So we've talked about the tools, but where does all that traffic actually come from? How do hackers generate enough firepower to take down websites and services? Let's dive into the world of botnets. Botnets are essentially armies of infected devices, controlled remotely by hackers. These devices can be anything. Computers, smartphones, even your smart refrigerator. Hackers infect these devices through malware, phishing scams, and other malicious means. Once infected, these devices become unwitting soldiers in the hacker's army. With a botnet at their disposal, hackers can generate massive amounts of traffic, enough to cripple even the most robust websites and services. We'll explore different botnet architectures, the methods hackers use to control them, and the sheer scale of these networks. It's a scary thought knowing that your devices could be used in an attack without your knowledge. But understanding how botnets work is the first step in protecting yourself. We've covered some of the classics, but the world of DDoS tools is vast and constantly evolving. Let's dive into some other notorious players in the game, tools that have gained traction for their unique approaches and devastating effectiveness. First up, we have the infamous Mirai botnet. This one's notorious for its use in some of the largest DDoS attacks in history. We'll break down how Mirai spreads, how it enslaves devices and the sheer scale of its impact. Next, we'll explore tools like HPing and Nmap. These tools are often used for network reconnaissance but can be leveraged for DDoS attacks as well. We'll dissect their functionalities and see how they can be used for both good and bad. And of course, no discussion of DDoS tools would be complete without mentioning the dark web marketplaces where these tools are bought, sold, and even rented out. We'll take a peek into this shadowy world and see how easy it is to get your hands on these powerful tools. Remember, knowledge is power, and understanding the tools at a hacker's disposal is crucial for building robust defenses. DDoS attacks aren't just some abstract cyber threat. They have real-world consequences, impacting businesses, individuals, and even entire economies. Imagine a major online retailer getting hit with a DDoS attack during a huge sale. They lose revenue, customer trust, and potentially sensitive data. Or think about a hospital's network being crippled by a DDoS attack. It could disrupt critical operations, putting lives at risk. We'll explore some of the most high-profile DDoS attacks in history, the damage they caused, and the lessons learned. From financial losses to reputational damage, the impact of DDoS attacks can be devastating. But by understanding the real-world consequences, we can better appreciate the importance of cybersecurity and the need for robust defenses. All right, we've talked about the threats, the tools, the impact. Now let's talk solutions. How can you protect yourself and your business from DDoS attacks? First and foremost, you need a robust firewall. Think of it like a security guard for your network, filtering out malicious traffic before it can reach your servers. Next up... Intrusion Detection and Prevention Systems, or IDPS. These systems act like security cameras and alarms, detecting suspicious activity and taking action to stop it. Then there's Content Delivery Networks, or CDNs. These networks act like a buffer, absorbing traffic spikes and distributing content across multiple servers, making it much harder for attackers to overwhelm your network. We'll also explore other solutions like rate limiting, black holing, and the importance of having a DDoS response plan in place. Remember, cybersecurity is an ongoing process, not a one-time fix. By implementing these measures and staying informed about the latest threats, you can significantly reduce your risk of becoming a victim. And there you have it, a deep dive into the world of DDoS attacks. We've covered the legal and ethical implications, the technical nuts and bolts, and the real-world impact of these attacks. But this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to cybersecurity. The threat landscape is constantly evolving, and it's more important than ever to stay informed and stay ahead of the curve. That's why I encourage you to subscribe to the Hacktivist Guide for more cybersecurity insights, tips, and tutorials. We'll be covering everything from ethical hacking to social engineering to the latest cyber threats. So hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon to stay notified, and join the community of cybersecurity enthusiasts. Because in today's digital world, knowledge is power, and together we can make the internet a safer place for everyone. So that was a deep dive on DDoS attacks. Definitely some scary stuff out there, right? But the important thing is, you're now more aware of the threats and how to protect yourself. Remember, cybersecurity is a journey, not a destination. 
Stay informed, keep learning, and always be one step ahead of the bad guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.